Okay, hey everyone. So in this video, I'm gonna build an amortization schedule with interest only periods from scratch. But first, let's start with some housekeeping items. So you're gonna see me using a lot of hotkeys in this tutorial. I've been using Wall Street Training's macros add-in feature for a few years now. So I use the corresponding hotkeys from that add-in. I'll post a link to the download page for the macros in the description on YouTube. And this is a free add-in. Also, keep in mind this is a simple amortization schedule, and it's possible to make these quite a bit more complex depending on the deal. So with that being said, why don't we get started? In the top in cell A1, why don't we name this amortization schedule? And we'll add a bottom border, alt H B H to do so. And we can change the font size. Let's change that to 16. Okay, so to start, we want a principal loan amount. This is your loan amount. Why don't we set this to a million dollars? And we change the font to blue because this is an input cell. Our output cells or formula cells will be in black font. So next up, we want an interest rate. And we want an annual interest rate and we want a monthly interest rate. So for an annual interest rate, why don't we make this 4.5%, set that to blue. And then for a monthly interest rate, we could do this one of two ways. So we can say 4.5% divided by 12, and that's going to give us a nominal interest rate, meaning if you compound this number 12 times, it's going to end up being more than 4.5%. Now, we could also do an effective interest rate by doing 1 plus 4.5% raised to the 1 12th minus 1. And in choosing between the two, you should check your loan documents, see how your lender's calculating this. But for the purposes of this model, why don't we just keep the effective interest rate? So next we want the amortization periods. And that's going to be in years. So we want 30 years, let's say, to start. And we can press Control-1. We can go to Custom and we can add in years in quotes after this. And then that keeps this as 30, but it looks like 30 years. So you can still use it in all your calculations. Now we want an interest only period. And why don't we put that in months? And let's say 12 months. That'll also be in blue and we can expand the column. So over here, at the end, we're going to do a payoff month, and we're going to do a payoff amount. Later on, we'll use an index match function to get through all this. Okay, so to start, we want month, period, principal, payment, interest payment, principal payment, and our end of period balance. Why don't we center these? We'll add a bottom border. And why don't we increase the column width? Let's call it 25. Okay. So the month is straightforward. We're gonna need 360 months since this is a 30 year schedule. You can input one in the first and then increase it by one for each month. And we'll need to copy this down. Okay, 360. Now here's where the logic comes in. So to calculate the interest only periods, we're gonna need an if statement. And we're gonna say if the month is less than or equal to the number of interest only months, and we're gonna lock this in by pressing F4, because we don't want that to move around, we're gonna return IO, which stands for interest only. Otherwise, we're gonna return the month minus the interest only period, or interest only number of months. And let's copy this down and test it out. Okay, so you can see 12 months of interest only, then the first, second, third, fourth period, etc. And we do this because we're gonna need this to calculate the principal payment amount. So moving on, our principal is going to be our starting balance. And why don't we fill in our principal payment next? Because this is another if function. So if the period 
equals IO, we're going to return zero because there's going to be no principal payment. It's going to be interest only. Otherwise, let's return the negative principal payment function. And we'll have our monthly rate locked in with F4, the period right here, the number of periods, which is 30 times 12, and we lock that in. And the present value is the principal amount locked in. And we use a negative principal payment function uh, because we want this to return a positive value just to keep everything consistent. And then our interest payment will be our monthly interest rate locked in times the principal amount. And that will vary over time as the principal gets paid down. And then our payment is simply the interest payment plus the principal payment. Finally, our end of period balance is going to be our starting balance or the principal minus the principal payment. And there you go. So we have to go to month two and our principal will be our end of period balance from the previous period. We can copy this down. And why don't we just copy this down here just to make sure it's working properly. Seems like it is. So the next thing we'll do is we will copy this all the way to the bottom. Now we want to check to make sure this is working. So in our last period, we have $58,748 left to be paid down. This is because we have an interest only period at the start. So to make sure this is working properly, we'll change our interest only period to zero. Let's go all the way back down, zero. So it, everything is fully amortized over the course of the loan if you have no interest only period. And then you could change this as you see fit. So 24 months, it automatically updates. Let's go back to 12. Next, we wanna calculate our payoff amount at the time of refinancing or sale. So why don't we say we're going to sell the property at the end of five years, which would be month 60. And let's just change, go in and change this for consistency. Now, what we wanna do is we wanna use an index match function to look this up. We could just use an index function, but if for some reason someone goes in and adds rows, it'll mess everything up. So if you're new to index match functions, it's best to start by using the match function and then nesting that within the index function. So match. We wanna look up month 60, and we wanna look that up in the month column, which will be our lookup array. And then we want an exact match, so we're gonna type in zero. And that returns 60. And that's the column we want to find the end of period balance for. So let's nest that within the index function. So we, our array is gonna be our end of period balance. Our row number, well, it's gonna be 60 because that's the mat, what the match function is returning. And then our column number is gonna be zero because we've already selected the column. And there we go. Now let's check to make sure this is accurate. We should have a pay, an end of period balance of 929.874 in month 60. 929.874. So that's it for the amortization schedule. You can clean this up a bit if you want. You can make it pretty. Uh, you can get rid of the grid lines by pressing Alt W V G. You can add some background colors if you want by pressing Alt H H and selecting your background. You can make this bold and then you could add a separate background if you'd like for the amortization table. And there you go. That is a simple amortization schedule with interest only periods in Excel. Thanks for watching and let me know if you have any questions.